Bobcat fans, I'm Bethany Cordell with Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to another edition of Dear Montana State, our video series dedicated to conversations with you, the fans. I am thrilled to have a special guest joining today. Um, we have Montana State women's basketball alum now, Fallon Freeji. Fallon, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great, thanks. I'm. Uh, you're the first video I'm recording being back in my office as opposed to on my couch at home. So, um, you know, small steps. But, Fallon, where are you hanging out right now? So I'm in Denver right now. Um, I came down to see some friends and Blair and Oli. Um, they weren't in town when I got back to town. Um, they were going to be the only two that I didn't get a good goodbye to, <laughs> not just the end of the tournament. So um, had some time and figured I'd come down and see all my friends. That's awesome. I love that you have been able to do that. So um, Fallon, we've collected some fan questions as well as a few from myself. So um, let's just dive, uh, dive right into it. So First question I have for you, Fallon, you did not start your career as a Bobcat. Can you kind of walk us through um, what your decisions were like in high school and why you ultimately decided to come to Montana State? Yeah. Um, so ultimately in high school, Coach Ben recruited me. Um, she even came to a home or a house interview or whatever they're called, house visit. <laughs> and yeah, drove all the way to small town. Well, she flew and then drove to my house in small town, North Dakota. And um, immediately you could just tell the person she was and how she you know cultured her program and what she believed in and I absolutely loved it um, but just you know the recruiting process is tough for anybody and especially because I started later um, in it coming from a small town I wasn't getting noticed by the big schools as early as most um, so it just came down to crunch time as in my senior year and I just really prayed a lot about it and felt like UND was the place for me and not MSU um, but I would say how that experience was and where I am right now absolutely played the biggest factor. Um, so that UND played against MSU. Uh, every time I always like pictured or just thought like if I had Montana State on or like, I, you know, those are, I thought about that all the yeah. time. Coming to today, it's like, wow, it actually happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always wanted to beat them. Mad that I wasn't there, but like wanted just to like have my best game of the year. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was the first three years and then things just weren't working out with my coach, um, head coach, just a lot of mind games and um, manipulation, things like that. It was just really hard to perform and I just didn't feel like I was reaching my potential how I could and I had one year left of eligibility. Um, things weren't really changing throughout my whole career every time I approached my coach about things. So I had one year left and I just had to make a decision um, if I was going to really try transfer for one year to play or stick it out and I just felt like I wasn't going to enjoy my senior year and I did not want that to be the outcome so um, a lot of decision a lot of talking with my parents and stuff and whatnot compliance helped me out and um, went in and just said I was leaving and um, shortly after literally like a few hours I get a call <laughs> ben. like what is she doing like she can't call me yet all this freaking out and I just remember calling my mom and I was like holy crap like coach Ben just called me she's like well call her back you know so I called her back and we we're talking um Riley Norgard was a good friend of mine she played you know I knew Peyton Hannah um Delaney all of them and I was in closest with Delaney and I was talking to her prior to coach Ben calling me and just saying I wanted out and um she was just super encouraging she was so encouraging my whole career even though we were playing against each other yeah. you know I just felt like she was so encouraging to me like there is going to be a better place for you and then obviously ending up Montana State, I just shout out Delaney, like she, she did a lot for me. Um, so yeah, so I came on a visit and absolutely loved it and signed within a few hours of being there just because I knew it was going to be a safe place, um, coaching environment wise, culture, all that stuff. And at that point, I mean, compared to when I was a 17 year old in high school, it's just, you know, the gyms and the woo and the wah, like doesn't really matter if you're not happy with your coach and stuff. So ended up at Montana State after few years took a little bit that was the running joke all year from coach Ben it's like oh we finally got you here but we could have had you I'm like I know I know <laughs> yeah that's my five years in a nutshell I love it well I for one and I think most of Bobcat Nation is is so very grateful that you ended up as a Bobcat um so when you transferred here you had to sit out for a year right can you talk about the impact that year had in preparing you for the incredibly historic year that we just finished up yeah, absolutely. Um, redshirting wasn't too bad for me, I will say. I honestly would do it again. I think that year was huge for me. Um, so many ways as a person on and off the court. 
Um, so I loved it. I think it's different when you're older and, you know, came from a rough place versus you're a freshman having to sit out and haven't played yet. Right. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. Obviously, it was tough to play, but I had um, foot surgery in uh, about the end of October. It was an ongoing thing from when I was end of my freshman year. So we just decided to sit me out, um, get the surgery at the time, too. You know, for me, I'm like, I just want to practice and enjoy it. <laughs> Um, I can't play in games, so I need to do something. And uh, so that was tough at first, but as I was recovering with my foot and whatnot, it was easier just knowing like I couldn't play anyway. I wasn't just sitting there. Right. So once I was able to practice again, it got pretty tough, especially because they were in the conference now, conference games. Um, I've been in the conference, so I already knew everything all the best girls did and whatnot. Yeah. So that got really tough. And then obviously, when we went to the tournament, um, it was tough how they ended, but. I just say it just so motivated me to see a bigger picture than basketball, which I think this year just like allowed me to like be a whole different person on the court. Just didn't have all that going on um, as I did previously at my old school. So I'd say that was the biggest change from my redshirt year to my playing year. And I mean, if everyone could have that experience, I think everyone should redshirt. <laughs> like it, it was awesome. And like you said, to have the year we did following that, um, it just made me so hungry and so appreciative of, the coaches and just like I said from where compared to where I was and just the difference in culture and the donors and like I was just so so grateful to be there and I just could not wait to get on the court just to give back to all of that you know and just be more involved with the community now playing you you know have more interactions with fans and whatnot so I absolutely could not wait and then obviously when the year started it was amazing. Well um, I can um confidently say that you clearly have built those relationships with people in our communities knowing how many mailing addresses you've asked me for <laughs> to send thank you notes out to people which I think is fantastic now um we've glossed over it a little bit but um I do want you to talk a little bit about Boise Fallon um obviously the whole point of, of college and, and being a student athlete and um going through these couple of years in your life is to gain life experiences and to learn and um you know, I don't think any of us were prepared for, we couldn't have been prepared for what that was. So just talk us through kind of what those couple of days were like and what you've learned from this experience. Mm -hmm. I will say I feel way different about it today than I did when it sure. happened. Sure. <laughs> we'll never forget it. Um, yeah, so we were in Boise, obviously, came right from the end of conference games. Um, I think it was the morning of, I want to say it was the morning of our second game. So it would have been on Wednesday, I believe. Um, and it came out on Twitter and everything that there was going to be no um, NBA anymore. You know, immediately we're like, oh my gosh, like that's huge scale. Like what if that comes down to us? But we were still like, oh, whatever, like probably won't. And then a couple hours after that, they came out saying that NCAA would have no fans, only like limited personnel and stuff. And that was, you know, right before, a few hours before we were going to play Northern Arizona. Right. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just like shocking like oh my goodness like just picturing in our head like our goal was not just to win the big sky whatever like we wanted we were gonna win a first round I confidently believe that and absolutely like, the second game I think would have been a better matchup than the first game even so it's tough but in our minds like that was going to be the end of our season um the crowd you know playing against the higher teams and the fans and that was just such an image of ours so when we heard that like that that was tough especially you know for me never being to the NCAA tournament before um, I was just really looking forward to that environment, but at the same time, we were all like, okay, we can't be looking at that. Like we've got to win tonight or else right. none of this can happen. So we didn't talk too much about it, I would say, um, until after the game or so knowing we only had one more left, but yeah, we played the game tight game. That was a fun game, uh, great atmosphere because the boys started and whatnot. And then that night we didn't, you know, say anything. It was just looking forward to the championship. And then Thursday, morning we went to an elementary school and did some volunteering reading and stuff and when we got back on the bus uh, Jason was the only one with us the coaches were at the hotel um, and he said before we were all on our phones and whatnot like what had happened they decided to cancel the tournament and we don't know if the NCAA will still happen and will be automatic or what will happen um, but immediately we we're all on our phones you know it was I think 30 some minute bus ride back so yeah. we're like, and at the same time, I think I had, like, a disbelief. Like, we only had one game left. Uh, we've been here all week. Like, I'm sure, you know, a smaller scale, we're not in a really bad city with this. I think they'll probably let us, like, play. It was my thought, at least, yeah. until back to the hotel. Um, then we had a large group meeting at the hotel. Um, Leon, Cami, everyone was in there, um, supporting staff, all our coaches, athletic trainer, everything. And 
Coach Vin, or Leon started telling us what had happened, and deciding it in the large scale all the way down. So like they can't really fight against that. And um, it just still felt disbelief. And then Coach Ben started talking and a senior started crying a little bit. I remember looking to my left and Martha wiped her eyes and I immediately then started and Blair and Oli were two more down to the left. Like, I can just remember that day and that yeah. moment so vividly. Um, we were all crying and then the underclassmen are crying and coach Ben's choking up and I mean everyone's crying and we're all just sitting there like holy crap like our goal our dream um, I mean working towards that every time even if we won we didn't feel like we played well I feel like as captains and leaders and seniors we were always just like that's not our best like that's not our vision and coach Ben was awesome with that reminding us of that so to really be working for that all year and have that happen was really tough, um, especially being the only senior never making the NCAA tournament. Um, that was a dream of mine since I was a little girl. So that was really tough. But I will say as the next couple of days unfolded, so then we came back the next morning, um, Friday morning to Bozeman. The next few days were super tough. But as I think that next week when it got really worse um, worldwide, I think it was easier to grieve just because, I mean, people were losing jobs. People were dying. Like that is so much bigger than basketball. Um, so I will say I was really, really sad, <laughs> cried a lot for about three whole days. And then it was just so large scale that, you know, everything wasn't just women's college basketball. So, um, yeah. And then here we are, I don't even know how many weeks later, <laughs> graduated. I just, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, one of the questions we had actually to switch directions into, um, maybe a little bit more of a positive tone. I do appreciate you sharing that with us, Fallon. Um, was what's next? You know, you were pre-dental, correct? So you did just graduate and um, I'm sure there's a lot of exciting things coming up for you. Yeah, so I have an agent. Um, I signed with him a couple weeks after we finished. Okay. Um, and looking to play in Europe is the idea right now, um, unless some other things happen. But just with COVID going until the fall, um, hopefully can get over to Europe in the fall and they have a normal season. I haven't signed with the country yet just because it's kind of slowing everything down. Um, so what my agent is telling me is they might they have like a couple different outcomes. They might not have a season. Um, they might have a season and expect like no Americans over or just, you know, financially, because since no one's working, they might only let people back who were already there. Um, no newcomers or whatever. So, I mean, it'll just depend a lot, I guess, on how everything shakes out. But if not, um, I'm just going to stay at home probably work in a dental clinic to continue that part of my life. Um, I won't apply to dental school just because I really want to play overseas or totally. professionally somehow prior um, to doing that. But once I do that, then I will go to dental school. Um, I haven't applied anywhere yet. And I just honestly, I'd go anywhere. Um, really, I haven't looked too much into it to pick one or two schools yet. Uh, but I just think it'll be a great experience wherever. I love to travel. So going to some state I haven't been would be pretty neat. Um, but I like the Midwest a lot. Arizona wouldn't be too bad in the sun. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> a little warmer maybe than Montana and Denver. <laughs> if I'm going to pay loans, I might as well go somewhere warm. But, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that is um, the goal. And then long term would obviously be to be a dentist or orthodontist and have my own clinic one day um, is the end goal. But yeah. Well, I love it, Fallon. You've been such an example of, of a student athlete and, um, you know, the, the top tier that we want all of our kids to reach for. So thank you for being that example. Um, kind of a follow up to that, actually. So you were on scholarship here at Montana State. What did that mean to you, um, both growing up and knowing that you wanted to play college basketball and um, knowing, like you mentioned earlier, getting to meet all the season ticket holders and donors who helped make that happen for you? I think um, the way I grew up in a small town, North Dakota, I graduated with 12 kids in my class. It just developed such a uh, giving and caring and deeply community part from such a young age. Um, obviously, basketball-wise, I always dream, like, if I would have grown up in a larger town, had, you know, recruited earlier, where could have I have gone? You know, what school could have I been good enough to go to? But um, that would never be able to surpass like what growing up in a small town has meant for me and you know anything happens in your family everyone's there for you within hours you know things like that I think that totally carried over to my appreciation um, for our donors for our fans to giving back um, just because I've always had that image in my head that that was the normal that's what you did that wasn't a decision that's just what you always did for people around you so I will say both communities um, in my college experience were so amazing and it just felt so like home I know that's cliche everyone we're family here community every 
And if you don't know, I will tell you, every single coach will tell you that. <laughs> but it was truly, I feel like, um, so awesome. And obviously, I think playing into that is, I mean, North Dakota, Montana aren't huge uh, states by any means. So I think that was in a, inevitable to happen. Um, but I appreciate that so much. And once again, like you said, for me growing up, I always dreamed of playing Division One basketball. Um, that was without a doubt. I, you know, young age, always envisioned in the WNBA. I would watch Candace Parker for Tennessee, you know, all those um, girls that played and now they're how many years in the WNBA and I still watch them. I still idolize them. Um, so it's just really, really cool just to see like growing up my vision and dream and then knowing like to have the donors provide and they don't sometimes even know who it's going to. Like for me, that's always been so personal every year. I just think, I mean, before every game, during the national anthem, I always do a prayer and I always just thank the people who like paid for me just to be here. Um, obviously we will walk on and have a great experience too. But for me, it like genuinely, and like I've said this to so many people, but it really meant, I can't even put into words sometimes, you know, I just, how much that I understand how much that really does impact my, me and knowing who is doing that to me means a lot. So um, yeah, donors and being a full scholarship athlete at both schools, I just think, it's so awesome, you know, all the other teams that only do halves or I mean, track, a lot of them are walk-ons. Um, so I don't think sometimes scholarship athletes really look at like what it could, could truly be like. Um, so I'm so grateful. I'm so, so grateful for the donors and the fans and the community we get to make friends with just throughout the year and their daughters at camps and all of that, I think just played so much of an impact into my experience at both schools for sure. Well, that's great. Thanks for sharing that, Fallon. Um, okay, next question, because we actually had a couple fans ask this. Give us, I'm going to ask for two of your favorite memories during your time in Bozeman, one basketball related and one not basketball related. Oh, okay. Um, I know basketball related, but I'm trying to think of not basketball related. <laughs> um, okay, so basketball related. Okay, I'm going to time together. They're going to be one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So growing up in the front yard, right, I'm in my head, little girl, like on a Walmart hoop. My parents always parked in the driveway. I couldn't make it down. I'm like, come on, move your cars. I can't drive. <laughs> so I, could, I had like five feet of room maybe to do shots, right? I grew up, I get an actual cement slab with a good hoop, blah, blah, blah. My whole life, I'm just like three, two, one, jumpers. And I always, I've never had like a buzzer beater, like game winner. I've done like shot clock buzzer beaters, but not as cool. <laughs> when we played the Grizz and I was just feeling it and got to hit that shot to tie it to go to overtime it yep. was just like, I mean at the time I don't have emotion like I'm not one to be like yeah like, I'm just like okay let's get locked down yeah. deep, you know next time but for me in my head reflecting on that game I was like oh my goodness like it finally happened so I, <laughs> and then obviously in the overtime to do it again like I I mean I've practiced that shot so many times when they say like you got to be ready for those moments I never ever you know I was getting like tired of like dang these moments aren't gonna happen for me like okay and then to get two of them in the same game and to cut I mean that whole game I mean we did not play well we're losing and to get back into it and I remember Blair getting fired up on the bench and you know everyone's like wow like yeah we are not losing this <laughs> I distinctly remember that too I was right behind the bench and I was like whoa Blair is is yeah. going after you guys. it was you know middle of the third quarter I think we were kind of getting some doubts we could not get a stop in the score and after that it was everyone was like all right let's go like it we might only tie but like we are not losing this you know um so that whole game in a nutshell was like wow absolute best but then we played him the second time. And wasn't, <laughs> I got in foul trouble, so I was on the bench. But when we went on our run in the second quarter, <laughs> the crowd was so involved. It was like every three Tory was hitting or someone was hitting. It was like the game winner just erupting in there. So tying those two games together. And then after the celebration, um, we all thought – I remember talking to you about the T-shirts. We all thought yep. it was going to happen the next Thursday if yeah. we Saturday. So then for it to happen, and we honestly had no idea, like, we were going to celebrate it then. It was oh, just, that gives me goosebumps. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going like, to cry thinking about it. <laughs> it was just like, wow. Like, I know what rivalries mean. I mean, back in North Dakota, I yeah. knew what rivalry meant, and to be a part of it, and to have both of those experiences. I mean, personally, I think some of the best both combined experience seasons for, like, how many Cat Grizz rivalries. But, yeah, yeah that, was, that was pretty fantastic. And locker room and water everywhere. And, <laughs> um, yeah, really emotional, really awesome time. And, once again, those are just, like, the moments you dream of. And to have them 
to come to see was like, wow, it really, really happened. So I will say basketball related that in a nutshell plays, I think, in my mind almost <laughs> every single day. I'm just like, wow. I watch like our highlight of that day all the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the slow-mo confetti. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, media guys, do it again. <laughs> yep, I was gonna say the video guys will be happy to hear that you're watching it. It's, it's funny. Last week we asked our fans on Facebook to like post pictures of the last Bobcat game they went to, um, and gosh, there were a good chunk of them that were like confetti selfies from that game. So, I, I think the fans will remember it just as fondly. It was awesome for sure. Okay, last question I have for you, Fallon, then I'll let you go. Um, we've talked about the seniors a couple of times, but obviously having five seniors that are graduating and leaving the program um, leaves some opportunities for other people to step up on the team. What is the number one piece of advice you've got for your teammates um, as you leave? Yeah, um, I've talked to a lot of them about it. Um, I'm a really passionate leader. You know, I've always had a heart for underclassmen, just making sure I'm teaching them how much leadership things I can. Um, not just by being a good leader, but just, you know, giving them little bits, just leading their class or leading their position group, you yeah. know. Um, I've always just had a natural instinct to do that. So I've tried, you know, um, my, at both school just to just set by a leadership by example, knowing like cultivating it to the culture and standard that coaches are wanting it to be at, where I know programs need to be, you know, the competitive top in the conference yeah. stuff. Um, because if you can do that, like the next four years, that that's hopefully going to be the same way. And then those four are going to teach the next four years and so down. So for me, I just feel like I have just put, like <laughs> tried to just show and lead and talk and talk. And I know all of them. I've probably been so annoyed at times this year, <laughs> for sure. Um, but just to do that, knowing like if they can lead, you know, similar. I had leaders. I you know had to do a ton of researching like leadership books and all this and that I just think like you can have such a better experience you have such a better team chemistry and like things off the court and that bond you have truly plays into how good your team can be you can be fantastic but are you going to make it you know deep into the tournament you can make the sweet 16 you know all that kind of stuff so for me personally I just think to lead them to where they need to be but now like they need to make sure the rest of the girls get the same experience you know Tori Ashley um, senior leader wise, I just think there's such an impact you can have on a culture and a program and what's to come. So just to, I mean, that is so besides just playing basketball, but basketball wise, I mean, they already know, like you gotta go hard every day. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta recover. You gotta meet with Brittany. You gotta be with Alex. You gotta be doing it all to be great, but they will, they've been awesome. I'll say my senior year, my whole team was just so awesome and everyone did all the little things. So I, without no doubt have, they'll have a great year for sure. Well, I'm sure we'll feel your leadership impact for years to come, Fallon. So thank you for, for being part of the Montana State family. And uh, as we wrap up, is there anything else you want to say to our fans that are watching right now, Fallon? Yeah, I just say thank you so much um, for everything you did, even if I never met you personally. I mean, just for the school. Um, I think you guys, athletic administration, top to bottom, all the way to whoever, <laughs> like lead on to everybody. I mean, people who set up the court, like – I just thank everybody from bottom of my heart. I had not the best experience in five years, but ending my senior year, like, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> but ending my senior year like that was um, truly a dream come true. And I just thank Coach Ben from very bottom of my heart. I will never be able to thank her enough. Um, just all she's done for me and still continues to do for me and just giving me that opportunity to be a Bobcat um, just really – means the world to me. So I thank everybody because it was really so special. They're going to make me tear up now. <laughs> so I think this is the perfect point to stop and wrap up for here. Again, Fallon, thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, really appreciate it. Um, please stay in touch and um, can't wait to, to see where you go. And thank you, Bobcat fans, for following along and go Cats. Yeah, thank you. Go Cats. <laughs> <laughs>